Good morning and uh, welcome to today's daily reflection. I'm going to start today by reading a passage from Paul's letter to the Colossians and I'm going to start at chapter 2 verse 1. For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who've not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love to reach all the riches of full assurance and understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments, for though I'm with you absent in body, yet I'm with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk with him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head and rule of all, all head of all rule and authority in him you were also circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ having been buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. By cancelling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. The list of things at the moment which just seem to be different seems to be continually growing and at the very least they are just not normal. Even the easiest of tasks seem to be taking longer than usual. We're doing things on different days of the week and most of us seem to be forgetting simple things like what day of the week it is. Because the days of the week have lost their usual routine. And I've seen it written and I've heard it said that it feels like we're stuck somewhere in that space between Christmas and New Year. The one where nobody really knows what day it is. Other than the the weather being a lot warmer, one of the other differences is the snow outside is the blossom as the wind blows it off the trees. A couple of days since I smiled as I saw a little girl walking past our house with her parents. She stood underneath our tree as the blossom petals swirled around her. She looked thrilled to see the carpet of pink blossom on the grass. As I saw that little girl marvelling in this sight of swirling pink blossom, I realised we had something in common, something, something that we were united in. We were united in the joy at which we were both looking at. The joy of creation, the joy of that blossom blowing in the breeze. And while the blossom never seems to last for long on the trees, as it's quickly replaced by the leaves, there's always going to be that memory of it. And each year I anticipate the arrival of the blossom. And I know that inevitably the wind will blow it off at some point. Because seasons change. And sometimes our own personal season is one where we struggle. And in this passage today, Paul admits he is struggling He admits his struggles for the church. He admits that he's wanting them and desiring for them to have other things. He wants the hearts to be encouraged. He wants them to be united in love and for them to have a complete understanding and a richness knowing the mystery of God in Christ. Now, if I'm completely honest with you, there have been times over the past few weeks where I have struggled where friends have struggled. But many years ago, I learned a lesson in supporting others while going through something myself. I learned it as a parent with a child in special care. My friend Lisa, at the time, also had a baby in there. And during that days, those days which were tough, 
One day she would help me, the next day I would help her. We kept each other going because we can do that. And 22 years later, our friendship is as strong as ever. So if you're somebody who's just beginning to explore faith and just happen to stumble across this thought, or if you're someone who's been part of this community for a long time, then please remember we can be encouraged by one another. We can support each other. And although we may be strangers at the moment, my favourite definition of a stranger is just somebody who is a friend that we haven't met yet. So often our actions in life arise out of what we believe. Paul wanted to encourage these people at their heart level. The level of their reason and their decision to follow Christ should influence their thinking, their choices and their subsequent actions. Paul's struggle on their behalf was motivated and driven by his love for Jesus and those who follow him. He understands and understood that as their hearts were encouraged, they would be bound closer together in love. This love was self-sacrificial and it's the love that Jesus demonstrated on the cross as he paid the price for our redemption, for our freedom. It was paid in full, enabling us to have our sins forgiven. Jesus prayed that we would be perfected in unity. Yet there will always be times where conflict causes problems. Even in the church, there are numerous occasions in nowadays and also in the New Testament where the instructions are directed at ending conflict to bring about unity. This love knits the body of Christ together, the church together, and it causes believers to act and react to others with humility. The results of being encouraged and having hearts knitted together in love is an abundance of riches that we have in Christ. The more we try to follow Jesus in our actions, the more compassion, the more understanding we have, and the love of Jesus will just ooze from us. At the moment, there are so many online services, talks, thoughts, reflections on social media. Some of them won't be anything like you've seen or experienced before. But celebrate, rejoice over the good things that God's doing in and through them. Pray for them, but also continue to pray for those who are facing difficult circumstances, even when you're going through them yourself. And if you need a listening ear, then please, please drop us a private message and somebody will give you a call. And equally, if you've got something to be thankful for, don't forget to thank God for that as well. Have a good day and I'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.